On October the 20th, 2019, Hong Kong's Wenwei Daily published a picture of a Hong Kong middle school textbook. The headline read, Celebrities of Traditional Chinese Virtue. The celebrity the text dealt with was none other than Joshua Wong. Joshua Wong is certainly a well-known figure, but he is more infamous than famous. A leader of the Hong Kong protests, he visited several Western countries, begging them to impose sanctions against his fellow countrymen. Such actions have nothing to do with traditional Chinese virtues. Yet he is glorified in textbooks. Clearly, there are serious problems with school education in Hong Kong. Education shapes the younger generation. Since 2012, general education has been a compulsory exam subject for Hong Kong high school students wanting to enter university. The other three subjects are Chinese language, mathematics, and English. The Hong Kong Education Bureau states that the purpose of general education is to make students become responsible citizens and look at the opinions and values held by others with an open and tolerant attitude so as to become a lifelong learner with independent thinking ability. This is the original idea of general education. However, general education is divided into six units, personal growth and interpersonal relations, Hong Kong today, modern China, globalization, public health, and energy, technology, and environment. However, against the backdrop of the protests, two issues came to the fore. First, would the teachers spread their time evenly across all six units, or would they spend more time on politics? And second, how would teachers handle the sensitive political issues covered by the Hong Kong Today unit? Inevitably, education became politicized and some basic information about China was neglected. Chinese history had been a compulsory subject, but in the course of several education reforms, it became optional. Still, some of Hong Kong's Chinese history textbooks contain obvious bias. The Ta Kung Daily published a screenshot of a Chinese history textbook used by Wong Kong Fai Secondary and Primary School, which is affiliated to the Hong Kong Baptist University. In the chapter entitled, Why Did the Opium War Break Out Between China and Britain? There is no mention of the vast quantities of British opium imports, which bled the Chinese treasury dry and turned countless Chinese people into drug addicts. Instead, it refers to China's arrogance and depicts the war as merely a conflict between political, trade, and judicial systems. Such distortions of historical facts have rendered some young people in Hong Kong ignorant of their local history and unable to identify themselves with the Chinese nation. This raises the question, if a young person has no knowledge of or familiarity with his own country, how can he love it? Miss Leung was born and raised in Hong Kong and is the mother of two children. But she is very worried about the environment her children are growing up in. Education appears to be sick. And if this is the case, it must be the educators who are to blame. In Hong Kong, there are many in the teaching profession who harbor extreme ideas, to the point that they advocate violence and encourage their students to stir up trouble. Some teachers are very eager to expect their political will and, and exert their influence on, on students. Okay, because they have very strong political stance, and some of them may 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 want to uh, do something against the uh, HASAR government. Amid the amendment bill protests, some teachers even included the demonstrations as materials in exams. 
The illustration was included in an exam paper. It depicts four ugly-looking police officers carrying a demonstrator away. The question requires students using their own knowledge to explain the advantages of the demonstrator's demands. Some of Hong Kong's teachers, rather than educating their young charges, are ruining them. The Hong Kong Professional Teachers Union is made up of teachers from universities, middle schools, elementary schools, and kindergartens. It is the largest single-sector trade union in Hong Kong. However, it has long been under the control of people with a hidden agenda. In 2013, the Teachers Union published a paper, Hong Kong's Political System Reform, taking Occupy Central as the example, which was included in the Civil and General Education textbook. Benny Tai, co-founder of the illegal Occupy Central movement and an advocate of civil disobedience, was cited as a consultant. In August 2016, Ip Kin Yoon, the leader of the Teachers Union, addressed the issue of students promoting Hong Kong independence on campus. He described them as having independent thinking, personal opinions, and interest in current affairs, showing a stronger sense of locality. During the protests against the amendment bill, the Teachers Union actively initiated demonstrations it encouraged academics to protest in Victoria Park and strongly express their political demands. According to information published by the Hong Kong Education Bureau in December 2019, during the protests it received a total of 123 complaints relating to the professional conduct of teachers, mostly involving the incitement of hatred. 80 people were arrested. <laughs>就可能对一些行为，特别是一些反社会的行为，侵害他人的行为，没就缺乏了一些疏离，就会啊把这个扩大化了。比如说他的极端的自我主中心、自我主义、极端利己主义等等啊，还有就是反叛的那个极端的极
Will one country, two systems be upheld or destroyed? Will the rule of law flourish or be trampled down? Will Hong Kong maintain her prosperity and stability or be ruined? Hong Kong and the mainland are in a community of shared destiny, connected by blood and by history. This relationship and the importance of one country, two systems are something Hong Kong society needs to fully understand as ultimately they will guide Hong Kong out of its troubles. The spirit of Lion Rock should not be about nostalgia and melancholy. With wisdom and courage, the people of Hong Kong can emerge from the shadow of the protests and see the bright path ahead.